evening all i hope you all doing great and uh, welcome to the insta live session number 6 and today we will be discussing about biohacking so biohacking what is biohacking i'll be letting you know once all the viewers join uh, hi kirti uh, hi sneha thank you thank you for joining once uh, all the viewers join we'll be discussing about biohacking today which is very important in order to maintain our health may it be mental health or physical health also so and the special guest for today is jo bains exclusively from central london united kingdom uh, sudhi bharadwaja hi sudhi i hope you are doing great hi kirti hi sneha uh, thank you for joining live with us and shortly we'll have jo bains with us once he joins we can definitely discuss about bio hacking so thank you all again for joining live with us and uh, just now we have started so i may have to wait for one more minute in order to have more viewers and also uh, there was a request from many of the viewers in order to have the live uh, in english so uh, all these days we had uh, in kannada so uh, we are having this live in english Uh, hello umesh ji i hope you are doing great hi nagaratna i hope you are doing great swasti i hope everything is well at your place suma has joined thank you suma for joining thank you all the viewers for joining uh, we are just waiting for jo bains exclusively for from uh, london that is united kingdom so once he joins we'll go ahead with our discussion on biohacking so this term may seem a little bit new to all of us but uh, uh, it's a very well known old science only the term is new that is biohacking and here biohacking is nothing but utilizing lots of resources lots of sources lots of technology in order to train the mind and body so uh, it's just like hacking your body and mind in order to uh, have peak performance or in improved performance Uh, Shri Lakshmi has joined. Hi, Shri Lakshmi. I hope you are doing great. And please stay live with us. Uh, Jo will be joining us very shortly. Uh, since the time variation we have, uh, so Jo Bains has joined us. And uh, I'll introduce Jo Bains. Hi, Usha. I, I hope you are doing great. So once Jo Bains joins us, I'll be uh, introducing him. of course he is seeing a video live now hi dinamanju i hope you are doing great and we have jo bain so let's all welcome hi sindhu i hope you are doing great hi jo how are you good evening hello hi i'm good i'm good how are you doing how's india doing i uh, am uh, amazing india is always doing amazing and uh, i hope uh, the same with uh, london also london is great i mean it's raining today but it's but other than that it's really good yeah we we're, we're enjoying the lockdown great 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 you're enjoying the lockdown wow i am oh, i'm i i think it's the best thing in the world <laughs> so let me uh, introduce jo uh, jo uh, is a biohacker and uh, i'll define what is biohacking he is a famous stand up comedian in central london united kingdom and also he is a uh, uh, online juggling trainer right uh, juggling right all right so i think we'll have a uh, uh, live demo of juggling or oh, wow that's great that's great <laughs> hi sindhu i hope you're doing great sindhu raj uh, very thank you for joining us today and uh, all right so jo has been into biohacking and uh, a very fam- a famous stand up comedian in london uh, i think we had met uh, two years ago in when i was touring london ayurveda tour of london so uh, that's great again seeing you online on insta that is insta live so uh, i'll just begin this live uh, with a small story wherein what is the importance of creating a positive atmosphere in and around us in order to have uh, uh, the success or the winning atmosphere what should be the winning atmosphere uh, jo shall i go ahead this is a story from mahabharat and uh, uh, of course my uh, uh, favorite coach uh, sonu has told this and 
uh, it's uh, definitely the all the version all the accent is also of sonu itself sonu sharma is a, a life coach in india so he is a, a very famous life coach and uh, ne- network marketer in india so what happens is i'll go ahead with the story what is the importance of creating a winning atmosphere what happens in mahabharata in one scene is uh, like abhimanyu uh, who is a son of arjuna gets killed by kauravas and uh, lots of kauravas surround him and kill him so uh, arjuna and lord krishna uh, would be at a different war field at that point of time and uh, abhimanyu dies uh, arjuna comes to know about the, this death of his son he uh, just consoles himself telling that uh, losing life or dying in a war field is a pride moment or a moment of pride so that's all fine but what bothers him a lot is uh, one villain of from kauravas side whose name is jaidrath what jaidrath does is jaidrath just kicks the dead abhimanyu that is once abhimanyu uh, dies he kicks the dead body of abhimanyu which upsets arjuna a lot so what arjuna does is once uh, after coming from his war field he just takes a oath that if by tomorrow evening sunset if i am not going to kill uh, jaidrath then i'll sacrifice myself by jumping into fire or agni so uh, then kauravas are very happy by this because they just come to know that if we are able to uh, save jaidrath or J- save jaidrath from arjuna's eyes and from pandava's eyes for just one day from morning till evening from dawn till uh, from dawn till the dusk then we are the winners because arjuna is gonna uh, sacrifice his life by jumping into fire so what happens is uh, because of the dharma yuddha the uh, yuddha cannot be done or the war cannot be done in the evenings so next day morning the the war begins again and uh, the pandavas arjuna everyone tries to search jaidrath but jaidrath is not at all visible and day passes time passes time passes time passes and then it becomes uh, it is afternoon and then slowly it's about to sunset so uh, at that point of time what arjuna does is arjuna accepts that i cannot do anything more he just throws his bow and arrow and just sits down at this point of time all the pandavas uh, uh, just see towards lord krishna and uh, request him to do something so, but uh, what lord krishna tells is i cannot bring jaidrath in front but what i can do is uh, just see i'll do something and then what he does is he just orders the clouds he just uh, orders the clouds to mask the sun it's about to be uh, almost the sunset happening and then when the lord krishna orders that please mask the sun the clouds mask the sun and what kauravas feel is it's almost uh, the end of the day that is the sunset has occurred and what they do is uh, they just bring jaidrath in front and uh, they all start laughing and scolding arjuna all the pandavas just see towards lord krishna and ask what did you do why did you mask the uh, sun then just lord krishna tells very important point here i'm just creating a winning atmosphere is what he tells the word is very important here winning atmosphere and uh, once arjuna uh, will sees uh, arjuna visualizes jaidrath there uh, krishna lord krishna orders the clouds to unmask again and then here comes the sun the sun is visible and everyone is in shock and arjuna with a shocking uh, expression on his face just Uh, turns towards lord krishna and then lord krishna tells what are you visualizing me just uh, lift the bow and arrow hit the target and then arjuna hits the target and jaidrath dies so that's the importance of creating a winning atmosphere uh, which is very important in each and everybody's life so if the atmosphere if the environment is not of winning uh, or towards the success then i don't think uh, uh, even if a person who is bound to be successful may not be successful or may be unsuccessful and if a unsuccessful if a person who is bound to be unsuccessful is in a uh, team of successful persons and then definitely he may be successful so uh, having said this story we let's go ahead with biohacking 
and uh, i hope you like the story jo uh, and you understood was, it yes i said i mean it's basically creating a mastermind group yes creating a mastermind group. this this is the word yes, what what an amazing word creating a mastermind is very important in order to succeed in each and every part of life and uh, Shri Raksha has joined Ushi Pops. That is a Dr. Ushi is telling amazing story. Jita Manne has joined. Hi, Jita Manne. I hope you are doing great. Thank you for joining live with us. Uh, going forward, we'll go. And uh, I think Ranga has joined us. Ranga is one of my uh, very good friend. Uh, hi, Ranga. I hope you are doing great. So, uh, Shruti. Hi, Shruti. I hope you are doing great. Going forward towards uh, uh, the bio hacking. Uh, how did you start all this, Joe? How was the bio hacking journey I, I, once again i want to tell the viewers that bio hacking is utilizing sources utilizing resources or utilizing technology in order to train your mind and body to be successful or to be healthy uh, or to be uh, performing at peak level is that right jo yeah basically yeah it's the art and science of peak performance and health and longevity anything that enhances you is by hacking um so it's like many assets and it's only been around for about 10 years and it only came about because now we have the technology to look inside the body but before we couldn't do this now we can look what's happening in your blood for example here i have bulletproof coffee and this has only come about because by high, because we have the technology if i drink this coffee we can see what's happening in my blood in real time we can see what's happening in the brain we can help see what what is doing and so we can now tune this coffee for peak performance or health or anything you want to do right you can change the, the the different consistencies and everything and see what's happening and that's biohacking um great. in a nutshell basically in a nutshell that's biohacking amazing yeah. great so uh, if we go ahead towards your journey towards biohacking how was it when did you start this and what were your inspirations as you have already uh, told and as everyone knows i think biohacking is just a term but uh, india is doing it since long time uh, i think that's great yeah so it, it, a lot of the biohacks actually come from india and china that have been doing it for like thousands of years but the only okay. problem was that you couldn't measure them you know like uh, more than 10 years ago you, like prayer for example meditation you couldn't measure these things but now okay. we can and we can go ah look this is what meditation is doing in the brain this is what yoga is doing in the body you know like now we can see it so now so that's biohacking is basically taking literally old technology and being able to prove that it works mm, that's great good to hear uh, if we go ahead with biohacking with respect to diet then what are the points you want to add uh, wherein how can we biohack Uh, with respect to diet i think uh, ayurveda is well uh, uh, very nicely told about all these things but uh, if we go ahead with clean eating or uh, uh, good eating habits uh, or maybe intermittent fasting or fasting so what are the roles of all these in biohacking so basically um you, the, your body has um, mitochondria in every cell in the body you've got the fuel cell the batteries in every cell is called mitochondria and your job is to keep those healthy your your job is to feed them properly and also inflammation in the body that's what causes diseases so if any of those two things fail it causes diseases problems in the body and uh, basically you want to keep those things uh going well and one of those like the simplest one um is to reduce inflammation it's like sugar uh sugar causes inflammation bad fats cause inflammation uh, so if you eat uh, bad food it causes inflammation so you want to reduce that so this is where the clean eating comes in and the other problem we have with the fasting thing and this is why it's called intermittent fasting is we eat too much food you know like for most of our evolutionary history we didn't have much food you you your ancestors had like maybe one meal a day one meal every other day you know we didn't get that much food but now we have food everywhere and now we eat three meals a day four meals a day and so the body doesn't get a chance to rest the digestive system and so intermittent fasting is basically reducing the window of eating to as small as possible so mine is 1 hour a day uh, but you start with a 6 hour window and then you reduce to 4 hours 3 hours 2 hours and so if you just eat for 1 hour now for the rest of the time your body can be healing um uh reducing inflammation and all that kind of stuff and that information only came about in the west in 2016 so in, it's called autophagy uh and uh, some 
Japanese researcher won like a Nobel Prize for it. Uh, basically, he spent his whole life studying fasting, uh, and you know, in in terms of science. And so now we understand fasting, you know, from a science point of view. Even though it's been in Ayurveda and in India for thousands of years, we didn't really, we couldn't go, oh, this is what it's doing, or it's doing that, or have that effect. And intermittent fasting is tuning fasting so we can get the maximum impact, you know, in the Western world now. So, and we're really good at packaging things up, marketing. Got it. So I think uh, West is good at marketing and uh, yes. India is good at producing. Yeah, so the, 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 this is the problem. The problem is that in India has the technology, they just don't know how to market it because they've, I think they've always had it. And the West is built on, um, on you know, uh, the West is literally just built on war and profit. Uh, and so we're very physical in the West, which is why, you know, it looks so great. It's because physicality, we, we know how to do that. The East is very good at the spiritual, the mental. Uh, but that stuff you can't see, you know. So, uh, and we know how to package things up marketing-wise. So we can take a, like a rock, put, um, you know, gold foil around it and go, look, there's gold. But the, in the West, that, that's all it is. When you look deep into it, it's just a rock, right? Um, there's nothing, there's no substance there. And the Indians, um, and I, I come from, I come across young Indians, by the way, who are completely oblivious. These are professional Indians from India who have, um, you know, like, um, who have PhDs, degrees, all kinds of stuff. And you say to them, oh, yeah, meditation, yoga, and they go, oh, that fake stuff. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, India's lost, is losing it. So, yeah. So I think uh, we should start marketing. Yeah, you basically, you just need to know how to market yoga and meditation in a way, you know, that is appealing to, um, uh, so, it, you know, the glitter, you know, it's appealing to people. And, and Sadhguru is amazing at that. I, I don't know if you know Sadhguru. He's, yes, uh, like, he is off the, off the charts as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and Vipassana. Vipassana, right. Vipassana. Vipassana, yeah. And Vipassana is in every city in India. I went to India to study Vipassana. And the, the effects of it are just so big that it's like, it's hard to comprehend. You know, so now I do Vipassana every year. I do 10 days of Vipassana every single year. And it's, it's like, it's nothing. It's like nothing you've ever experienced. So, yeah. so here I would like to mention a quote. I think many of them know it. Uh, it's not my quote. Uh, it's being derived from somewhere. Uh, it tells that the best known will always be the best so you may be the best, but if you are not known, then you will beat the one who is best. So yes. I think yeah. the best known will always beat the best. Yes. So it's uh, very important that you are known, you are best also, and you should be known also. Which is why uh, Microsoft beat uh, Apple. Even though Apple had the better product, Microsoft had the better marketing. Because people know more about it. Yeah. Right. All right. Great. So... Uh, if at all we go ahead with uh, these kinds of fasting, then uh, I think uh, two years ago when I met you in London, uh, you were eating just some mustard uh, sauce or something, which I remember. We had been to some, uh, uh, I think, Trafal Trafalgar Square. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, the, so, there, the, so that's keto. So uh, keto, I think what you're doing, okay. keto, yeah. So ketogenic keto. diet. I, I am keto. So this drink um, is... It's probably got, I don't know, about 800 calories in fat. So okay. this is bulletproof coffee, so it's got a lot of butter in it, good quality butter. Everything is quality. Uh, if you, it doesn't matter what you eat or uh, drink, it's, the quality is important. Like if it's vegetables, for example, and they've been sprayed with uh, chemicals and they're in a sort of shitty soil, pesticides and all that, and you eat those vegetables, it's going to make you ill, right? Because you're going right. to take those chemicals in. And it's the same with an animal. If you eat an animal that's been uh, is ill, it's been pumped full of uh, you know antibodies, uh, all kinds of toxins. It's been given crappy food, and it's ill and it's sick. And then they kill it, and then you eat that. You're gonna get its its uh, sickness, you know. So uh, it, it's the quality. The quality is so important. And Ayurveda is all about quality. Uh, it's yes, about making Ayurveda sure you have the right. Yeah, exactly. And and, and you know Panchakarma. Panchakarma is amazing. I did that a few years ago. 
And it, it, one of the things in Panchakarma is where you eat ghee for seven days, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, they've actually looked in the in the lab what happens to your body uh, when you just eat fat. Um, mm. When you just give your body fat and nothing else, the 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 cells reconfigure, and they follow different pathways. The uh, so it's literally turning on different genes in the cells when you just eat fat by itself. Oh, so I th I think uh, whatever we practice panchakarma, it is a smallest. It is a form of keto diet itself because uh, we put them on lots of fats. Uh, uh, like most of it, ninety five percent would be fats itself. Uh, once we start it, so it's a form of keto diet itself, and uh, that's great. So uh, if we go ahead with sleep uh, in the biohacking, then uh, uh, I would like to ask you about the environment or the right environment. How can uh, how should it be uh, the sleeping room or uh, maybe the atmosphere, the environment? So so your uh, naturally again this is so if you go back naturally uh, you know the tens of thousands of years millions of years um, the sun starts going down and then and as the sun goes down it produces more and more red light red light and less and less blue light and so our brains are designed that if there's more and more red light and less and less blue light it's time to sleep you know and so uh, Bob. The problem with the Western world now is we have artificial light, so we don't have that. And so there's something called red light therapy, uh, which operates at 660 megahertz and 850 megahertz. And those two frequencies um, activate uh, the brain to go, it's time to sleep. They start producing more melatonin. Melatonin is the, uh, the hormone unit you know, for, for sleep. Um, so what you're supposed to do is put it on like two or, two or three hours before you go to sleep. And that, that gets your brain and body ready for sleep. Uh, and leverage light also charges your body up as well. Your, the, the, um, uh, the mitochondria in your cells, they absorb red light and use that to, as food, basically. Right. And then if you are uh, very busy with the digital gadgets, I think uh, that red light will increase and blue light will increase. Yes. Yeah. So, what, so you can have a blue light filter on your laptop and in your phone which takes out the blue light and you're just left with the, the other lights and that helps okay. you uh, that helps you shut down and then the other one is it's very important is to have it completely dark and so if you can't have it completely dark like I do here uh, okay. for example I don't have any curtains so I use uh, like an eye mask um, got it. to to completely you know like the one they give you on the plane yeah, um, got it. I use one of those and you put that on and it shuts out the light, and then you can uh, use that uh, to sleep because you need it needs to be dark, you know, ideally completely dark. That's um, it. How about avoiding blue light, like digital detoxification? What are uh, how are the things you are uh, doing it there, or how are you performing it there uh, in London? So, 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 so the digital, unfortunately, like Facebook, social media, it's all defined to get you addicted uh, to, because you get these likes, you you know, uh, there's a ping, all these are giving you, you know, it's like a monkey. Uh, we're being given like little peanuts, you know? Um, so what you have to do, no, it literally is because we are at the end of the day, monkeys, right? And so every time you get a like, every time you get a ping on your phone, it's the same as you giving a, mon a monkey like a peanut. Uh, and so what I do, and addiction to, Social media, it's like that. It happens like that. So what I do, for example, on my phone, most of the time, my data is switched off. Uh, all my notifications are switched off. Uh, I, I, as soon as I, you know, I turn everything off. Uh, so I go online, I turn my data on, and I go on when I want to go on, when it's time for me to go on, check what I need to check, and then I switch it all off. And it's all one click for me now. Uh, I switch everything off. So 80% of the time, my phone is uh, offline uh, and in the morning the first two or three hours in the morning i don't I, I don't go online i'm completely offline so i have like a morning routine uh, where i do meditation so for example this morning i did 20 minutes of meditation i do i try to do like two hours of yoga uh, and then i do the tony robbins priming and this is all to get my you know do everything i need to do to get my body and mind in the right frame you know like you were saying about 
creating the right atmosphere. It's yes. about creating, and so once, and then you, then at ten o'clock or whatever, you can go online and check whatever you need to. And um, but, I mean, social media is great. All this stuff online is awesome. But if you're in charge of it, then it's great. If it's in charge of you, then it's a bad thing. Right. Yeah. So all it's right. basically, and it's just being aware. It's just being conscious. That's all it is. So I think this is a good message to all the viewers, wherein we have to be the owner of social media, not the social media has to be owner owner of yes. us. It shouldn't own us. And and That's because it. we're monkeys, uh, it's quite easy for it to take over us. Peanuts. Yeah. Yeah. Peanuts. This, yeah. But this is all it is, right? <laughs> Great. All right. Uh, when it comes to biohacking with respect to exercise uh, or breathology, which you are talking about, or uh, the breathing techniques, uh, pranayama, yeah. which is pranayama, uh, originated, yes. originated in India. So, yes. uh, or any other forms of exercise, how are they uh, playing an important role in biohacking? So, um, biohack is all about efficiency. Um, and so, one of the things they found in the in the uh, um, in the universities when it comes to exercise. Is, is is intense exercise, which is called HIT, H-I-T-T, I think it's called. Uh, basically, high it's high intensity, yeah. So basically, you want to go crazy for 20 seconds, quick rest, go crazy again, and or if you're running, you run really fast, then run slowly, and then run really fast. So as long as you're, you know, you want to hit your maximum peak, as fast as possible, peak, peak performance, yeah. Uh, and if you're weight training, you want to do really heavy for short periods, and it's all about, because for your body, to, for exercise to have an effect, you've got to go beyond what's comfortable. You know, if you just, if you're good at running at five miles an hour or something, and you run five miles an hour for an hour, it's not really exercise, it's movement, right? Because you're not really going beyond what the body's capable of. So you have to go beyond. And, you know, if you're lifting weights, you have to lift heavier weights if you want to grow. And so... So there's two things. There's movement, like dance, walking, whatever. And then there's exercise. Exercise is where you raise your heart rate to its maximum. Uh, you, you push your body and your muscles beyond where they have to grow. So that's exercise. And you want to do it short bursts because your body also needs rest. You know, so if you so just, you know, go on. It's, it's all about uh, coming out of your comfort zone. Yes. For the brain Maybe and for the body. Yeah. Body, right? So mentally and physically, you have to come out of your comfort zone. Coming out of your comfort zone. Yes. For the brain Maybe and for the body. Yeah. Body, right? So mentally and physically, you have to come out of your comfort zone. That's great. All right. So uh, then was the meditation. Can you uh, tell a little bit about the Tony Robbins peak performance? Uh, what all the thing? What all are the things you learned? And uh, to the viewers, I want to tell that uh, Joe is uh, one of the uh, such one of such a intelligent person and uh, uh, very enthusiastic person wherein he travels across the world just to train himself or just for biohacking i think that's the right term to be used here yeah uh, i mean I, I i think you had visited singapore for tony robbins uh, peak performance uh, I, I've, seminar. I've been i've been everywhere i've been everywhere Every, so everywhere. yeah so the thing is in our world now Flights are easy, you know, like you can be anywhere in the world, but your time is expensive. Your time is valuable. So if there's something you need to do and you want to do whatever that is, retreat or seminar, and it happens to be on the other side of the world, one flight hours. ticket, yeah, 24 hours, one flight, and you're there, you know, whereas your time is a lot more valuable than a flight, right? right. Uh, so I, I go wherever I need to go to do whatever I need to do. Uh, so Tony Robbins for me is huge. Uh, literally, and Tony Robbins is about, so it's about your identity. You know, your identity is created when you're three, four, five, six, seven years old, randomly, by your parents, your peers, random stuff, right? So your, your, your identity is very random. But what Tony Robbins says, look, your identity was created randomly. But let's say you want to be, uh, uh, I don't know, let's say a top class comedian, right? But you're really shy and you're you're really anxious and you hate crowds and you you know you you know you, you you're that kind of person your identity is to be like an accountant right well right. The, so those two don't go together so you're going to really struggle to be a like a comedian for example so they say well what you can do is go like i want to be a comedian so what's the best identity you need to be a comedian so then you reprogram 
your identity to get you wherever you want to go. So you, your basically your identity is like the operating system on a on a computer. You use the right operating system to do whatever you want to do. So you just reprogram it, and that's what Tony Robbins is about. It's about reprogramming your identity to get to you wherever you want to go. Peak performance uh, and peak performance, peak state. So that I do that um, that jumping up and down, uh, and it's basically so so. So the way it is like if you look at yourself, we think we're one person. So I'm one. We're not. We're like a team. There's a team here. There's the subconscious mind. There's this mind. So this is why, when you want to do something, like for example, you want to lose weight, uh, mm-hmm. but you love cake, uh, you love McDonald's, you love whatever, right? And you hate exercise. You are not gonna get. You know, you're not gonna lose weight, right? It's not gonna happen because there's different parts of you. And so what you've got to do is you've got to get all the parts of you, just like a team, to align for one goal. And that, and so for example, let's say you're a, you're a football coach, right? And you're getting your team to be uh, aligned to win the match. And you go, look, guys, um, I want you to go out and, uh, and, and win the game, right? It's not going to happen, right? But you've got to be like, listen, guys, we're going to go out there and we're going to go, and everybody's going to go and hit, and, you know, we're going to win. And so... That is emotion, that is energy, right? And that is, that's what wakes your team up and go, oh, wow, he's serious, right? Uh, and so Tony Robbins' incantations and the jumping up and down is, is a way to get the, all the different parts of you to align towards one goal, whatever that goal is. And you're not going to do it by going, um, I want to be a millionaire. Uh, I want to be... Uh, you know, it's not going to happen, right? You could do this all day, right? But if you're jumping up and down and going, yeah, I want to be a businessman, I'm going to be this. And, you know, that aligns all the other parts of you to go, oh, yeah, this guy's serious. We better get we better get on with it. You know, so that's that's what incantation is all about. Whatever we give to the universe, it gives us back. Yes, that's right. But we do it with energy and emotion. If we give lots then, of positivity, energy, positive yes. energy, then it gives us back. Yes, that's it. That's uh, that's true. That's, that's it. And, and the other one is people want instant results. And, and you know, you and like if you want to build muscle, for example, you don't go to the gym one day and go, I've, I've been, you know, lifting weights for an hour. And I look in the mirror, there's no muscle. I go, weights don't work for me. You know, like it doesn't happen. And this is, and you have to go every day for months to build muscle and everything is the right. same you know like everything there's so if you go to the gym uh, and work work out like you know an hour and you do that every day every day you're getting like a one percent improvement but a one percent you're not going to notice right for for months until it gets like 30 40 percent then you go oh wow suddenly i've got muscles right and that applies to everything so like meditation because uh, i'm a health coach as well and some people I get, I'll go, oh, I can't do meditation. I tried it once. It didn't work for me. I was like, what, how, what, in, on what planet do you think it's going to work on one day? You know, if you meditate for an hour, it's giving you a 1%. But you have to meditate every day for an hour to see the results in a month's time, two months. It's just like building muscle and it's just like learning any skill. You know, like if you want to learn German or whatever, right? Um, if you went for one lesson and go, oh, that was really confusing. Um, I don't think German's for me. You know, you're never going to learn anything. You have to go for months, right? Uh, and so, it's, and it's all about rewiring the brain, and that te- that is not easy. So you have to. Uh, so yeah, you have to. If whatever you want to do, you have to do it consistently for months to, you know, to become good at it. Uh, it's the same with juggling. You know, you have to learn. You know, you have to study. Good, good. Every good. day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm actually a juggling good. coach. <laughs> People hire Great. me to teach them how to juggle. So I have uh, online students. Um, wow. I used to have physical students. Companies even uh-huh. hire me. There is a company that wants to hire me. I will turn, go into a company for two hours uh, and take a team and teach them how to juggle. Okay. And I can do that in about two hours. Really good. I, I, I think this will rewire the brain also. Yes. So this is like learning a language. Uh, once you can, the language is incredibly, because it's so hard, it rewires the brain. Uh, so it'll make your brain heavier by two to three percent, you know, literally more connections. And juggling is again the same sort of thing. Once you learn to juggle and you can juggle and do all that, it's just it's like you've learned a new language. 
it's rewired your brain. It's made it heavier um, by two to three percent. So, and you can meditate with juggling as well. You know, oh, that's great. After a while, after a while, you can meditate. So, really good. Just be learning. Just be learning. Whether it's a piano, juggling, whatever, anything, it doesn't matter. Just learn, and that's your life great. will be much better as well. And when it comes to mindset or mental well-being, with respect to raising the level of consciousness, so what is your opinion in such case, or how it works in biohacking? So uh, it, it's called a growth mindset. So um, okay. uh, it's basically um, it's you can learn anything, you know. Like uh, so, a growth mindset is that uh, you reward yourself for effort rather than uh, for talent. So it, it, this works really well with the child. Right. For example, if you and they've done test studies on this. So if a child is doing something and you go, oh, wow, that's amazing. You're so talented. You're so clever. Right. That wires the child to be, oh, I'm really good at this. Uh, so what happens is the child now is opposed to doing difficult things because difficult things is going to fail it. So the child then only only wants to do easy things because those things is naturally good at. And, and and you're rewarding it, a child on on being talented, not on hard work. But if you take the child and go, wow, that must have taken you a lot of work. You must have worked really hard for that. You know, well done. You know, and if a child fails, and you go, wow, you must have put a lot of effort into that. Well done. You know, like now you're rewarding a child for effort. So the, now the child's not care about the result. It's it's because it's being rewarded for effort. And what they found with kids is if you reward them for effort, they try harder and they succeed more because they don't care about failing anymore because it doesn't matter if you fail, but you're going to fail, right? And, and failure is part of the learning process. You know, if you want to grow, you're going to have to fail. And if you're not failing enough, you're just not trying hard enough. That's what it is. Right? And That's we are, we're designed to grow. Like we are wired to grow. And if you don't grow, if you stay in the same job or in the same kind of town, you're going to get depressed because you're not growing. So we always have to learn, grow, expand. We're designed to expand. And Sadhguru gives the best talks on that. Um, and the biggest problem we have is we think problems are outside, but actually all the problems are in here. So whatever problem you have, just in here, nowhere out there. Uh, and Sadhguru gives the best um, example of this. Um, what is it? It's basically, so there's a, a guy and he's going home, but he comes uh, comes to the pub. And uh, so he's, I'm just going to have a couple of beers. Before he knows it, it's two in the morning and he's completely drunk. And he's like, oh my, my wife's going to kill me, right? So he's walking home, he's drunk and he falls into some thorns. And he cuts his face a bit, but he makes it home. He gets home, his wife is asleep. He goes to the bathroom. He looks in the mirror and he's got all these cuts. He goes, oh man, I got a bit some. So he gets some plaster out puts it on, goes to sleep. The next morning, his wife throws, you know, cold water and she goes like, where have you been? And he goes, I haven't, I, I haven't been drinking, I haven't been drinking. And she goes, you idiot. So she grabs hold of him and takes him to the bathroom. And she goes, what's that? And she points at the mirror and what he's done, he's put the plasters on the mirror rather than his face. Oh. Yeah, and that's, that, and that is an anal analogy that Sadhguru uses because we think when there's a problem, we think that you're the problem. There's a problem over there, but the problem is in here. And if you don't solve it in here, your problem keeps coming back over and over again. And that's the same as you going into a room and there's a mirror. You look in the mirror and you've got all these cuts. So you put plasters on the mirror. If you go to the next room, you look in the mirror, the plaster, same. the plaster, yeah, it'd be the same. And you put plasters on that. And then, and you go, there, I've solved it. And then you go to the next room and it's the same thing, right? And you go, oh, shit. So you, and that's what we humans do. We're going around each of the rooms putting plasters on the mirror. And so the problem just keeps coming back because you haven't solved the problem. You've just been, you know, trying to, you know, you're trying to solve it in the wrong place. Right. Our world is created here in there, you know, and then we project that out. And so if you that's want to good. solve any problem, you have to go in there. But, yeah. Okay, and uh, we have learned that you are a good stand-up comedian in central London also. So how has comedy helped you in uh, biohacking or comedy helped you overall? 
so for me, I'm I used to be I used to be a cloud engineer. So you know, I used to work on like Google Cloud, Amazon Cloud, that kind of stuff. I used to build those things. Um, I am Indian, right? <laughs> this is what Indians do. We do IT, too, right? Uh, but I was also an introvert. I was also very shy. I didn't want to. I hated being in front. The idea of being on stage in front of people would give me a heart attack. I was like, okay. okay, right? So I was like, no. And I'm one of those people that if there's something I come across which I th- is hard, I'm like, okay, I have to do that. So I was like, okay, I want to be a stand-up comedian. Well, how are you going to be a stand-up comedian, right? And so, um, I mean, oof, the things I had to do to be a stand-up comedian. Um, so I had to desensitize myself from from this. And so I done like lots of experiments and a lot of exercises um, to make myself confident to make so I'm actually also a confidence coach I teach people how to be confident and I've had loads of students I think I've had like 50 students and I teach them how to be confident and it's because I learned how to make myself confident so this is not natural this took a lot of time and effort to do and one of the exercises I used to do and I don't do it anymore because I don't need to uh, is I would go and talk to like a hundred strangers really quickly, right? Okay. Just complete strangers. Um, when I first started stand-up comedy, I couldn't go on stage uh, mm-hmm. because I would just freeze like that. And I was like, oh man, I'm performing at this club and I'm just going to go like this. So what I used to do at now, two hours before going on stage, I'd run around outside talking to random people. <laughs> and I would oh. talk to like a hundred people, like literally, hey, how are you doing? Oh, I love your hair. Oh, uh, that's really good. Oh, where have you been? You know, just completely <laughs> strangers. And you do that really fast to like 50 or 100 people, you're wired. You're like, oh my God, you can do anything. Once you can do that really fast, you can do anything. But the problem is you lose the benefits by the next day. So I had to do that every day. So oh. I went through three, I think it's like six months I did this where I was talking to 100 to 400 people, strangers, every single day. Like, I would get up and be like, oh, man, I need to talk to 400 people. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was hard. So so, so this routine is just like taking, uh, just like bathing or just like brushing. So it it should be done daily. Yes. Uh, It needs to be done daily for at least three to six months to make it permanent. You know, just like meditation or you know, go, going to the gym. If you want to, if, so what I've found, I've done a lot of experiments on this. If you do something every day, um, it builds up momentum. You know, the body gets better and your brain gets better. Um, but if you stop after a couple of weeks, then the benefits only last a few days. If you stop after about a month, then the benefits last about a couple of weeks. But if you continue for three to six months, something changes inside you. I don't know what it is, but the benefits become permanent. And then you never need to do it again. And the benefits just stay. So, um, so yeah, I did that for like, so I must have talked to, I don't know, like 10,000 people in that six months. That's, I mean, it's not 10,000 people. I think it's 10,000 strangers. Yes, 10,000 strangers, yeah. And it was just great. I would go on the train and I would just talk to every single person, every single carriage. And if the train hadn't got to its destination, I would talk to every single person on the way back. And uh, some people reported me to the police. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I ended up, I think it was Liverpool. I was performing at the Liverpool Comedy Club. And on the way there, I had to make sure that I was in state. And so I talked to every single person on that train. It's a four hour train journey, but I did it in two hours. So I went and talked to every single person back. And somebody reported me to the police. <laughs> <laughs> so when I got there, the police were waiting for me. <laughs> so I think uh, this is one of the side effects of uh, trying to improve. Or yeah. this is one You'll of get... the uh, uh, obstacle in the uh, pathway of success. Yes, yeah. You have to be willing to do whatever it takes. And so I spent, I think it was like an hour with the police trying to explain to them why I was doing this. And, and, and I think you learned there also because you did, uh, even police were strangers for you and you spoke with them also. Yeah, that's right. Well, they spoke <laughs> with me. But once I explained it to them, they were like, oh, all right, well, that sort of makes sense. And then they let me go. Oh, okay. I, I think they would have already started doing it. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. 
so uh, final question to you what is the role of learning or relearning in biohacking uh, you so, have already answered to this uh, like uh, maybe piano or juggling you have already told this but still if we uh, have to learn or relearn which is a, a lifelong affair so what is the role of that in biohacking so it, the, the brain in the in the body is always it needs to be stimulated it needs to right. you know it needs to grow you know um you you so you either um, dying or you're growing right so you want to be growing all the time so you always want to be learning um and also you know like um if you're just sitting there you know not doing anything you're going to start getting diseases you know mm-hmm. if you're not connecting with other people you're going to start getting diseases you know so you have to be connecting growing learning expanding you know all the time um and that's what life is you know because you know when you die you stop doing those things so if you stop doing those things you die like so as good as we are dead yeah that's right i mean in the west we have it really bad because we've got this thing that you go to work and then at 65 you retire what what they found is that when people retire it means they're no longer useful they've got nothing to do they die pretty quickly afterwards <laughs> because they've got nothing to do they're not growing they're just sitting vegetating at home and they die basically um so you you can't retire i think in the east you have a better system than than the west in the east you're still useful right even when you retire i i don't know but uh, i'm i'm assuming like there's these blue zones around the world where people lived over 100 like regularly and they found one of the reasons these people lived over 100 because they don't retire you know they're still useful they're 80 years old they're still working they're still valued in society they're still doing things and if you're doing things and you're useful you're going to live longer you know and so these people naturally lived over 100 because they're useful you know as soon as i put you in a wheelchair or whatever i put you in a corner and forget about you and you can't do anything you're not doing anything you're going to die you know right that's yeah. that's true <laughs> amazing that's a, that's a very informative session uh moving towards the end of the session joe you want to tell anything to our audience our viewers any uh, anything with respect to biohacking anything with respect to peak performance anything with respect to anything yeah so i i love india by the way um india has it's like and I, and the problem i'm seeing is young indians they are after the um you know the glitter you know the 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 uh, the, the, the rock which has got okay. um um like a silver around it and but there's nothing in there like so the the gold is in india like the technology in india in terms of uh health well-being spirituality all that kind of knowledge. stuff knowledge 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 all that is so far advanced of the west the west is a monkey with a wrench <laughs> okay that's the that's the level of the west uh and the monkey's great at knocking things you know but you know that's all, the west is very physical and and physicality only has a certain limit uh the east is is phenomenal the, the technology in the east is so far advanced of the west it looks like magic you know okay. like you you got sadguru this guy is just off the charts in terms of yoga i mean i discovered yoga only a few years ago by the way and it's blown my mind completely vipassana the meditation if if you you're an indian right and you you've gone through you know medical school you're a phd uh, and you've learned the west stuff it's just the physical you're just at level 1 like you haven't even you haven't even started learning you know you think oh my god i've got a phd oh i'm so great no it's so rubbish you go and do yoga you like proper yoga you go to do vipassana it'll blow your mind it'll make that phd look like you know a monkey uh, with a hammer you know it literally is like like west yeah which is what the west <laughs> is and and it, it, the west has come into india as well like this indians in india who got these doctors you know and they know jack shit about health and in the west they know nothing about health like nothing at all and we've got this this um illusion that like a western doctor and a western medicine it's about it's got nothing to do with health it's about disease management you know uh, because there's no money 
There's no money in you being healthy. Uh, they only make money if you're unhealthy, and now I can give you some tablets and some whatever and an injection. That's where the money is. And so the West is all about profit. Uh, so, yeah, learn Ayurveda. Go, go and do Vipassana. The, the two things that will blow your mind if you're an Indian in India, go and do Vipassana and go and do Inner Engineering. Sadhguru's yeah, Inner Engineering, true. those two, they will just rip your world apart. Um, I'm, I did Sadhguru's Inner Engineering, I think it was about two years ago, and it just blew my mind. And in 2014, I went to India and did Vipassana, and it ripped my world apart. I, I am where I am now, sitting here in front of you like this, because I went and did Vipassana. Um, yeah, so, yeah, just do Vipassana, Sadhguru in Engineering. Yeah, that's it. And you're that's done. It. That's it. So that's all, it. Yeah. All, all the value, all the uh, wealth is in India itself. So I think uh, but it's up everyone here. of us, yes, it's up to here. Yeah. We have to utilize it uh, in order yes. to perform to a peak level. So yes. that was great being live with you. Uh, time to end the live session. Uh, it was great and uh, almost 52 minutes of uh, live session. I hope you enjoyed, Joe. I, I had a great time. Thank you very much. I hope, I hope you guys, oh, I hope it opened your mind, eyes up, minds up. That's all I want to do. Definitely. Just to make you aware. That's we it. hope the same. Prashant has joined. Hi, Prashant. And uh, lots of viewers have joined. Uh, but thank you very much for joining us. And uh, I hope uh, Dr. Deena Manju is telling good, uh, great session. Uh, thank you very much, Sri Raksha. Thank you for joining. Thank you all the viewers for joining. And thank you, Joe, for joining. Uh, uh, I hope lockdown is treating you well. And I think you are uh, located located in central London. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm not London. far from London Bridge. So if you're in London, London just... Bridge. Uh, yeah, so just just ping me, uh, and uh, we can meet two meters apart. Okay, uh, but but to do that, I have to travel from India to London, which is not possible right now. Yeah. So uh, hopefully uh, we'll meet soon. And uh, yes. Dr. Usha, thanks for this amazing uh, informative session. Thank you, Dr. Usha, for joining us, and uh, I hope you're all doing great. And uh, wish you all the success. Wish you all the good health, great health for all the viewers, and Joe, you also. Hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye. Namaste. 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 Yeah.